Right friends, welcome back to SNT Health and Environment for 21st week from 23rd May to 29th May. And we are going to deliberate on three issues briefly. The first one is concerning the Arctic region. Arctic may become ice free for the first time in 1 lakh years. Second important aspect is era of plastic degrading bacteria. Japanese researchers found plastic degrading bacteria. Then the third important point is a liquid cancer test offers a hope for alternative to painful biopsies. Then first and the foremost is Arctic may become ice free for the first time in 1 lakh years. And if you look at the coverage of ice in Arctic region as per the United States organization National Snow and Ice Data Center, the coverage of ice in Arctic region 30 years average is 12.7 million square kilometers and on June 1, 2016, it reduced to 11.1 million square kilometers. So, if you look at the coverage of ice on June 1, 2016, it is around 1.6 million square kilometers less in comparison to the 30 years average. And the difference is equal to the size of about 6 United Kingdoms and it is believed that the last time when the Arctic was free of ice was somewhere around 1 lakh years ago. And what is ice free? Ice free is basically the central part of Arctic and North Pole is free of ice and the remaining amount of ice will be trapped along the islands of Canada's north coast. That means the prime regions of Arctic that is the central part of Arctic as well as North Pole will be totally ice free. And less ice means the surface of the earth will become darker and subsequently earth will absorb more of sun's energy. So, the drawback of the surface becoming ice free is earth absorbs more sun energy and if you look at the Arctic ice boundary in the year 1979, please look into this slide and if you compare the ice of 1980 and 2012, please look into this slide. You can easily see the comparison of ice in Arctic region of 1980 in comparison to 2012. And what are the reasons for warming up of the polar region? All of you are well aware in recent times, month after month, record is being created in average global temperatures. Average global temperature of May has beaten the records of April. Average global temperature of April has beaten the record of March. So, like that month after month, global average temperatures records are being broken and overall there is an increase of 0.6 degrees centigrade in global average temperature during the last 5 years only. The other prominent reasons include extreme weather events like bomb cyclones. You may ask what is meant by bomb cyclone? Bomb cyclone is nothing but extra tropical area of low pressure when the central barometric pressure drops at least 24 millibars in 24 hours. That means when the barometric pressure drops suddenly that is leading to bomb cyclones. Not only that floodings in United Kingdom. Recently, we have seen flooding of several areas of United Kingdom, then out of season tornadoes in United States of America. And another important aspect is the sea ice of the north coast of Russia, which normally insulates the water below to keep it cool. That means the ice normally insulates water to keep water cool is no longer exists. Hence, the water is being warmed because of the lack of ice on the surface in the north coast of Russia. So, because of all these reasons, Arctic is becoming ice free in recent times. And effects of reduction in ice caps of polar region, what will happen if ice caps melt away? 
the melting of ice sheets in the polar region may lead to extinction of some species polar bear please look into this slide this is one example then overall ecological balance will be disturbed not only that it may lead to rising of water levels which may endanger our coastal areas and it may also lead to thermal expansion of the oceans and another important aspect is since water circulates over the globe in a predictable pattern changes in the great ocean conveyor belt affects worldwide climate as well as oceans inhabitants so it will have disastrous consequences once polar ice cap melts away right so let us leave this discussion at this juncture the need of the hour is to control global temperature increase right look at the next one this is about era of plastic degrading bacteria japanese researchers have identified bacteria which degrades plastic it is revolutionary development and if you look at india in the year 2015 as per the survey conducted by central pollution control board in 60 cities of the country the total quantity of plastic waste generated is around 15000 tons per day as per the statement given by the ministry of environment forests and climate change out of 15000 tons of plastic generated only 9000 tons is collected and processed and remaining 6000 tons of waste is not being collected at present in 60 cities of the country and under these circumstances the experiments by japanese researchers throws some light and the best agents to degrade huge amounts of accumulated plastics or the biological life forms such as bacteria and bacteria another important trait is they multiply by the millions in days and they are themselves completely biodegradable the japanese researchers identified a bacterium species capable of breaking down plastic that is the polyethylene terephthalate or popularly known as pet at first they identified a mixture of bacteria species that degraded the pet film surface 75% of the pet film surface was broken down into carbon dioxide at 28 degrees centigrade and the scientists isolated the bacterium species from the mixture named adionella secansis and if you want more there are two enzymes isolated by japanese experiments i have given the details here the first molecule which they named is pet ace and the second one they called mhet hydrolase and remaining details i have given here please go through this and the important aspect is japanese experiments for plastic degrading bacteria let us move on to the next one that is liquid cancer test offers hope for alternative to painful biopsies all of you are well aware in case of cancers the present system is tumor biopsy is done you may ask what is meant by standard biopsy please look into this slide standard biopsy is basically taking out the tissue from the tumor cells and this is invasive procedure and sometimes it lead to complications if the cancer is especially pertains to organs like liver and standard biopsy is invasive and sometimes results in difficulties to the patient and now another method is being tested that is a liquid biopsy and here no tissue is taken out from the tumor basically it is a testing blood sample of the patient the blood tests to detect cancer mutations are known as liquid biopsy tests and as per the experiments they produced results that generally agree with those of the tumor biopsy tests that means we have just now discussed about the standard biopsy test as well as liquid biopsy test and the tests conducted 
through liquid biopsy, the results almost coincided with the standard biopsy tests in majority of the cases. And basic theory here is DNA fragments from tumors are found in tiny amounts in the blood of patients with the cancer and liquid biopsies are not being used currently to diagnose cancer, but they are being used to monitor disease progression or to detect genetic mutations in the tumor that could suggest which drug should be used. Basically, to monitor the disease progression, not only for that, to identify which drug is to be used, for these things at present liquid biopsies are being used and in future probably liquid biopsies may replace invasive tumor biopsies. And the Food and Drug Administration of United States of America gave its first approval for such a biopsy, one developed by Roque, a pharmaceutical company to detect the mutations in a particular gene. And here flow diagram, please go through it, how the liquid biopsies work. All the technicalities are given here and recently results were available for more than 15,000 liquid biopsies conducted by Gortent Health and the 15,000 samples came from the blood of people with various types of cancer including lung, breast and colorectal and for nearly 400 patients tumor biopsies were also available and a direct comparison was made with the results of liquid biopsy tests with the tumor biopsy tests. But one particular shortcoming which was found in the liquid biopsy test was that for about 15 percent of the patients overall, no tumor DNA was detected in the blood as the tumors that do not shed DNA into circulation at detectable levels. That means in 15 percent of the cases, DNA could not be detected in the bloodstream, but for 85 percent of the cases, this could be detected in the bloodstream also. Right? So, let us hope this liquid biopsy to become a standard procedure for testing various cancers in future. Right friends, with this let us conclude the science and technology. Have a nice day. Thank you.